The Blues haven't won a Suncorp decider since 2005. Freddie may have to change a winning team. Brad Fiddler has shown he has the steel and fortitude to make mass changes to a losing side, but can he adopt the same philosophy to change a winning team and break a 17-year drought? New South Wales have not won a decider at Suncorp Stadium since Andrew Johns inspired the Blues to a come-from-behind series win in 2005. Fittler proved his critics wrong in engineering a resounding 44-12 win in Origin 2 on the back of seven changes to the side that lost to the Maroons 16-10 in the series opener, but the Blues found themselves going into a decider at Suncorp just two years ago on the back of a thrashing of Queensland in Game 2 and were beaten 20-14 by a Maroons side that was dubbed the worst in Origin history on paper. A decider in Brisbane presents the Blues with unique challenges and they can't simply rock up with the same team hoping for the same thrashing they produced in Perth. In 2020, Fiddler kept the exact same side that trounced Queensland 34-10 in Game 2, but they ultimately fell at the final hurdle in front of a parochial Queensland crowd. Fiddler knows a decider in enemy territory is a different beast and he will need the best possible team to get the job done on Queensland soil. Latrell Mitchell looms as the biggest potential inclusion should he make a successful return for South Sydney ahead of Game 3, but given his lack of match fitness he is a risk the 25-year-old has played seven origins all under Fiddler and he is the type of player that Queensland don't like playing against because of his physicality and aggression. The South star was arguably the best player in last year's series and despite being down on game time this year, his class would be welcome in the pressure cooker of a Suncorp decider. Mitchell gives the Blues that competitive fire that they will need to win on foreign soil, but who he replaces is less clear. It is almost impossible to drop Matt Burton after his dream debut in Perth, which leaves Stephen Crichton as the man most likely to make way for Mitchell. Complicating matters further is the expected return of Blues regular and Fiddler favourite Jack Whiten from Covid. Whiten was the Blues' best player in Origin I, albeit in a losing side and surely warrants a spot somewhere in Fiddler's 17 provided he has no lasting effects from his bout of Covid. There is an old saying, you need an old dog for a hard road, and they don't come much harder than a decider at Suncorp Stadium, so Fiddler may need his trusted and experienced duo of Whiten and Mitchell for the battle ahead. Whiten could potentially resume his utility role on the bench, with Siosifer Talakai to make way, but that would leave the Blues short on big men on the pine. The Karoysaw and cook Jewel hooker combination worked in Game 2, but is it the best way to go for Game 3? Karoysaw was strong in the first half, without being spectacular, but it did allow Cook to dominate as Queensland tired in the second half. Carrying both Cook and Whiten on the bench would be a bold move by Fittler in a decider where big men are historically worth their weight in gold, particularly given the Blues were much better in the middle third of the field in Game 2. Now for the radical selection shake-up that could see both Whiten and Mitchell brought into the centres, with Burton moved to 5 8 and Jerome Luai dropped for the decider. On the surface it seems an unnecessary risk for a team that just put 40 points on the Maroons. Breaking up the Cleary and Luai halves partnership on one hand seems like madness given their success for the club and state over the last two seasons however, with the exception of a try and a line break in Perth, Luai was poor in Game 2 and was guilty of some silly mistakes and needless penalties. One incident saw Luai give away a penalty for rubbing the face of a Queensland player on the ground and it led directly to Cameron Munster's first half try off the ensuing set. Such poor discipline could prove costly if Luai is a repeat offender in Brisbane and it could cost the Blues the game and the series. Dropping Luai, while a brutal call would allow Fiddler to use Burton's awesome kicking game even more at 5 8 and allow the experience and physicality of a Mitchell and Whiten centre partnership to form for the do-or-die series finale that would allow Fiddler to keep the balance in his side and particularly on his bench with Siosifa Talakai holding his spot despite having limited opportunities in his debut. Muddying the Blues' selection waters further is the potential unavailability of star prop Payne Haas due to an ankle injury sustained in Game 2. Haas is arguably the Blues' most important forward and with Jake Tobojevic as one prop it leaves the Blues short on specialist front rowers. That could lead to a potential recall for either Reagan Campbell-Gillard or Daniel Saifiti, who is scheduled to return in Round 16. Whatever the final makeup of his side, Fiddler must learn from the mistakes and the experience of 2020. Changing a winning side is a risk, but Fiddler has shown he is a horses for courses coach, who picks the best 17 to get the job done for each game. That may mean making changes to his winning side from Perth to ensure the best 17-player combination can do what no New South Wales team has done in a decider at Suncorp Stadium since 2005 and bring the shield home. Peace.